In this video, we present different scenes described in our publication on the accurate large-scale simulation of ferrofluids, as well as several comparisons illustrating the relevance and influence of the different components of our underlying physical model and our algorithmic approach. In the absence of a magnetic field, our simulation of ferrofluids is reduced to smoothed particle hydrodynamics, SPH-based fluid simulations in which surface tension is incorporated. This scene shows the simulation of a fluid crown example, illustrating the presence of the surface tension, leading to the typical shape of a crown. If a magnetic field is applied, the ferrofluid starts forming its characteristic spikes. This is illustrated here for different surface tension and magnetic field strengths using a vertical constant magnetic field. A strong surface tension force smooths the contour, while a strong field strength increases the height of the spikes. Some SPH solvers clamp the negative pressure in pure fluid simulations, which is not sufficient for the accurate simulation of ferrofluids. The negative pressure is necessary to keep an intact fluid surface. This comparison of center versus fitted forces shows the presence of more fluctuations when only the center forces are used. A constant magnetic field is employed here. In this example, we are moving a tray containing a ferrofluid up and down in a real wet lab experiment. The initially formed spikes are flattened once we are lifting the tray and turned back into their initial configuration once we move the tray down again. A cylindrical magnet is located under the tray. Our in silico simulation shows a similar result and therefore provides a first qualitative evaluation of our approach. When employing such a dipole field, the importance of our fitted force model is even more evident than in the case of the constant magnetic field shown before. It can clearly be observed that the center-only force model leads to unstable results compared to the fitted force model. Modeling interparticle magnetic forces is inherently relevant in order to allow for the formation of the characteristic spikes. As illustrated in this comparison, the spikes cannot be generated if interparticle magnetic forces are not included. Now, we compare different numbers of iterations for solving the magnetic field. Even when using only a single iteration, we get indistinguishable visual results as illustrated in this comparison. Here, we compare different kernel sizes. As it can be clearly observed, the different visual results are barely distinguishable. In another real experiment, we rotate the magnet as shown here to illustrate the importance of the orientation of the field lines in order to form the characteristic spikes. Our simulation reproduces the same expected phenomenon. In this example, a steel sphere is magnetized by a cylindrically shaped magnet located below. The steel sphere attracts the ferrofluid. During the simulation, the strength of the magnet is changed over time, resulting in varying fluid shapes. We are able to simulate magnets with arbitrary shapes. In this example, the geometry of the well-known Stanford bunny is used. The magnetic bunny is showered with ferrofluid, which is forming its characteristic spikes and patterns on the surface. In order to allow for a qualitative comparison with complex geometry, we perform a real experiment in which we pour a ferrofluid down the top of a steel helix placed above a strong electromagnet. Our simulation leads to a visually comparable result. Finally, we make use of the same steel helix which is magnetized in order to attract ferrofluid from its base to its top. The ferrofluid is literally climbing up the helix as shown in this real experiment. The simulation can reproduce this observation as presented here. Thank you for your interest in our work and watching this video.
the corresponding publication and supplemental material, as well as more information about the authors and our research, can be found on our website, www.computationalsciences.org.